Dear Evelyn, in the early 1950s, Leon Festinger and a group of fellow scientists infiltrated a UFO cult run by Dorothy Martin. Martin and her followers, called the Seekers, believed that the world would end in catastrophic floods on December the 21st, 1954. Festinger and his team wanted to know what would happen on December 22nd, 1954. Members of the Seekers cult were indoctrinated into the belief system, such that their lives revolved entirely around the belief that the world would end on December 21st. They had given up their money and normal social connections. They were surrounded by fellow believers, and these believers made up their social circle. The cult members were isolated. The end was coming. The group locked themselves away. They awaited rescue from a promised UFO. Midnight. It is the 21st of December. The morning comes. Nothing. Dorothy Martin receives a message from the aliens. The cult has saved the Earth. What happens in end of days cults the day after? The followers' beliefs are confirmed revitalized. In this case, faced with incontrovertible proof that their beliefs were wrong, the Seekers cult began evangelizing about the truth of their message. They're still going today. What's happened here is what Festinger calls cognitive dissonance. The Merriam-Webster dictionary defines this as the psychological conflict resulting from incongruous beliefs and attitudes held simultaneously. The Seekers cult, for instance, had the belief that the world was meant to end on December 21st, and the contradictory belief that the world continued past that date. This is cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is uncomfortable, and the cultists needed to resolve the conflict. They couldn't give up the first belief because they'd invested too much in it. They couldn't give up the second one because, well, the world still exists. The way they resolved their cognitive dissonance was to adopt a third belief. The cult saved the world from destruction. This is why the Seekers and cults like it don't die when confronted with contradictory evidence, but are instead rejuvenated. But cognitive dissonance isn't restricted to cults. It is a feature of our everyday lives. Often, when we rationalize away irrational behavior and beliefs, we are engaging in cognitive dissonance reconciliation. I would argue that cognitive dissonance can be found in all areas of our lives. Many of us find ourselves in careers that we just don't want, but remain in because it's just for now. We enter relationships that become sour and stay with our partners because that's just the kind of relationship we're used to. We watch another and another YouTube video, whilst knowing we should be getting on with something more productive. Cognitive dissonance is not just for the crazy. Sweet dreams. On that note, here's some more videos. Come on, what's one more? I'm sure that thing you're meant to be doing can wait for four minutes.